The murder trial against the two men charged in the shooting death of Daniel Hutch Hutchinson continues today. Coming up, Amy, who's testifying? All right, thank you, Lauren. Plus, details on that helicopter crash that killed Iran's president and other officials. We'll have the latest on recovery efforts and a closer look at just how those deaths could trigger more unrest across the Middle East. Good morning, Brandon. Amy, good morning. And a new apology from music and business mogul Sean Diddy Combs following the release of this video, the shocking video of him brutally beating an ex-girlfriend. We're going to hear from him coming up. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. Lots to get to. Good morning. Thanks for being with us on this Monday, May 20th. I'm Amy Lang. And I'm Brandon Hudson. Uh, more witnesses are taking the stand today in the trial against two men who were charged in the murder of popular jeweler Dan Hutch Hutchinson. We heard gripping testimony from Hutch's widow on Friday as she described the day her husband was killed and talked about their relationship with their lawyer who's accused of plotting their deaths. Fox 2's Lauren Edwards is live in Pontiac where today's testimony is already underway and she joins us now with the very latest. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning to the both of you. Just as you said, the murder trial against the two men charged in the shooting death of Daniel Hutch Hutchinson is going on right now behind me at the Oakland County Courthouse. It is entering into its second week. Now, attorney Marco Bisbikis and Roy Larry, they are the ones who are on trial. Authorities say Bisbikis hired Larry to kill jewelry store owner Daniel Hutch Hutchinson. It happened on June 1st, 2022, when Hutchinson and his wife Marissa were sitting in their vehicle outside of their Oak Park store. Authorities say that day a man rode up on a bike and allegedly fired shots into a vehicle. Hutchinson died. Marissa, his wife, was wounded in the leg. Now, initially, five men were charged, three pleaded. Wife Marissa testified last week that she and her husband had a lucrative business making $30 million during the pandemic, but not all of it was reported to the IRS. She says Bisbikas, who helped the couple launder money and also said that he was in a movie, wrote himself into their will. She testified that they had no clue about that. Today, we heard from Darnell Larry, one of the men who took that plea to avoid a life sentence and to testify against him. And this is what he had to say on the stand about Biz Bickus. How deep was your loyalty to him? Very deep. It was deep to the point that I would sacrifice my life for him. You would he sacrifice was, your yeah, life? Yeah, he was in, in the arms, way. How did you, I mean, as far as the relationship is concerned, well, how did you feel toward, what was the relationship between the two of you like? To my knowledge? Yes. I thought it was pretty, pretty good, uh, family-like. Now let's take a live look into the courtroom and listen in to what else he has to say. Just as you heard, though, he was talking about his relationship with Biz Bick, is talking about how they had known each other for some time and that, that he considered them to be close, considered Biz Bick is to be family, and that he even flew out to his wedding. Biz Bick is flew out to Darnell's wedding out in Vegas. Now, more is expected to come out today. More people are expected to testify on the witness stand. Please stick with Fox 2 as we bring you live updates as we get them reporting live in Oakland County. Lauren Edwards, Fox 2 news. And Lauren, this is the second of two men who were very, very close to Marco Bisbikas who have testified now in this case. Obviously, the goal for uh, the, you know, prosecution is to, you know, let everyone know what this uh, plot was all about. But then we're going to see these attorneys for Marco Bisbikas as well as the attorney for Roy Larry say, hey, these guys aren't credible. Look at what they tried to do. Absolutely, and I think that's what so many people are thinking. But I also, you know, am thinking that a lot of people just want to hear what else is going to come out. What else are they going to testify to? What else are they going to talk about? So a lot of eyes and ears glued to this case as so many people, so many people were glued to it after the shooting happened. So many people just wondering, again, what is going to be talked about today? Exactly, and as you mentioned, that uh, testimony from Marissa uh, Hutchinson last week was so compelling. Thank you so much, Lauren Edwards. On top of this story, we appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, take a look at your screen here. This is Cortez Robb. Uh, Detroit police are still looking for him. If you see him, do not approach him, but call 911. Please say that Robb 
escaped their custody while at Henry Ford Hospital for medical issues. Rob broke free while being admitted. Officers initially arrested him on suspicion of committing several felonies. And take a look at this. Police in Detroit investigating a crash into a liquor store on the city's east side. This happened just before 7 o'clock this morning at the Mr. S party shop between Kelly Road and Duchess. No word yet if anyone was hurt or inside the store when it happened. And a fire at a senior living complex on Detroit's east side leaves some people without a place to live. First responders help residents get out of City View Senior Tower. The Detroit Fire Department says it got to the flames pretty quickly, got them under control, and no one was hurt, but several units suffered smoke and water damage. And now a lot of questions following an explosion outside a restaurant in downtown Rochester over the weekend. A terrible turn for a lot of people who were just yeah. taking a night out. A total of seven people were injured. All of them were walking along Main Street. Two of them were children. The good news. What we understand, there was a propane tank for one of these portable heaters outside the business. It caught on fire. It somehow got tipped over, and as a result, it exploded and sent pieces, as you can see, about 50, maybe 75 yards uh, to the north and to the, uh, actually over here on the east, too. So scary stuff, but the good news, none of the injuries appears to be life-threatening. The explosion appears to be accidental. Well, the future of Ann Arbor Public Schools and its teachers and staff now rests on a decision from the school board to work out its budget deficit. The district currently has $25 million shortfall and has proposed a plan to make more than $20 million in cuts. At least 100 teachers and staff in nearly every employee group could face layoffs. The proposal would also close middle school pools, eliminate language and band classes, and then cut other courses with low enrollment. The school board will meet tonight and vote on it. Well, here's something you should always do, but this morning, a good reminder to be sure and buckle up before you put your car in drive. Today marks the start of the annual Click It or Ticket campaign. From now through June 7th, law enforcement agencies across the state will be checking to make sure drivers, passengers, and minors are wearing their seatbelts. It's required by Michigan law, and anyone who doesn't click it will face a $65 fine.